Why do countries develop differently? If country A and country B followed the exact same steps, one might still develop faster and more successfully than the other. And this is because each country is unique. In today's video, we will be looking at six different factors that affect development. This includes history, trade, technology and industrialization, health and welfare, education and political stability. Be sure to stay around to the end for a quick summary of this whole video. The first factor that we will look at is history. Whatever has happened in that country's history is going to affect the present. Whatever that country prioritized, or how that economy was run, or even something like colonization could have an impact on how that country developed and how it works today. For example, a colonizing country might have prioritized the extraction of raw materials from their colony and they might have really wanted those raw materials to be exported and then processed somewhere else. They didn't prioritize the manufacturing of those raw materials in their colony. That means that once that colony gained independence, they would have really struggled to develop in terms of manufacturing goods because their focus was on extracting raw materials. The second factor of development that we will look at is trade. You should know by now that trade is the exchange of goods and services. And when this exchange happens between countries, it is called international trade. There is another term that you need to be familiar with called globalization. And globalization is the social and economic exchange that happens between countries. And it is because of globalization that we can have access to more products and more services globally. Globalization includes better transport systems and better technology to allow us access to more products and more services. For example, Apple is originally an American brand, but here in South Africa, we can purchase Apple products. Apple is an example of a multinational company, which is just a company that owns or controls production in at least one other country other than its home country. Apple is an example of a company that started in an MEDC or more economically developed country and set up operations in an LEDC or less economically developed country to increase its international trade. It is important to realize that trade can either lead to development or it can actually hinder development depending on how the government is handling that country's money. The third factor of development is technology and industrialization. Industrialization is a process of using industry to help develop your country by manufacturing and processing goods. Often LEDCs struggle with this route of development, but that doesn't mean that they are unable to develop further, and I will be talking about that in a future video. The general trend is that LEDCs export raw materials to MEDCs at a fairly low price. These MEDCs then use these raw materials to manufacture and produce goods, which are then sold back to LEDCs at a more expensive price. This happens because in general, LEDCs have an abundance of raw materials and they know how to extract these raw materials. Whereas MEDCs have invested in proper equipment and machinery and warehouses to actually manufacture these products. The fourth factor of development is health and welfare. A general trend is that healthier people live in MEDCs, whereas less healthy people live in LEDCs. And this is because nutrition and healthcare is often prioritized in MEDCs. In LEDCs, there tends to be a lack of proper sanitation, and this means that diseases can spread much more easily. There are a number of health and welfare issues that are vital for development to take place. Healthcare is an obvious one. Another one is nutrition. Countries should also make sure that basic services are in place, such as access to water, toilets, and electricity. Adequate housing needs to be available for people. Decent roads and transport needs to be made available. Education and skills training, job opportunities, and security and peace of mind. 
These are all issues that a country should strive to achieve for its citizens to ensure that that country develops. Now, they are all important, but if you were in charge, which one would you prioritize? Which one of these health and welfare issues do you think is the most critical to ensure development of a country? Maybe you think one of these issues could potentially unlock all the rest and ensure a domino effect of development. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Which issue do you think is most critical? Which issue would you try and fix first if you could? Number five is education. I'm sure you would all be able to tell me that education and skills training is very important for a country to develop. You may have even commented on the previous topic that education would be your most critical health and welfare issue. As I'm sure you know, a lack of good education leads to a lack of skilled labor in a country, and this can make it very hard for people to improve their lives. It can be very difficult for someone to improve their quality of life without being very knowledgeable in a certain subject or without being very skilled in a certain field. It is also very challenging for a country to develop if there is a lack of skilled labor that would help carry out these processes to ultimately make this country more developed. For example, making machines or building factories or manufacturing products or providing a very specific skill. People need to be trained and they need to be skilled and knowledgeable to assist their country with development. I love the quote, the future of the world is in my classroom today or on the other side of the screen. That is so true. You watching this right now, you are the future. The future dentist, the future researcher, the future plumber, the future lecturer, the future mechanic, the future president. And you might think, I can't do that. I don't know the first thing about that. But that is where education and skills training comes in. You learn. And once you become skilled in that field, you become an expert and you can assist your country in development. You will learn, you will be trained, you will be equipped, and you will one day contribute to your country's development because of your chosen career. The last factor of development is political stability. I can guarantee you that in war-torn countries, development is not their top priority. If a country is politically unstable or experiencing conflict, it really disrupts their journey of development. So those are some reasons why countries develop differently. Some have prioritized certain health and welfare issues. Some have different raw materials. Some have different histories. Some have different levels of education. All of these factors play a role in how a country develops. And once we understand that, we can really appreciate the different and unique development journeys that each country goes on. Let's quickly recap everything with Sharky. Hello, little Sharky. Today, we look at six factors that affect development. Firstly, we looked at history and learned that the past influences the present. Secondly, we looked at trade. We learned that globalization really impacts how countries can develop. Then we looked at technology and industrialization and learned that a general trend is that MEDCs tend to process and manufacture goods while AEDCs tend to export raw materials. We then looked at health and welfare issues and thought about which one could be most important for a country's development. Then we looked at education and how important education and skills training is for the development of a country. Lastly, we looked at political stability and learned that if a country is politically unstable or experiencing conflict, it can be very difficult for them to develop. And that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go back and rewatch anything that you need to recap. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!